Now that we have some idea of how to do file input and handle file streams, I think it's important to be able to handle when the stream contains bad data. So file streams, like an if stream and an OF stream, are similar to streams that we've been working with previously, specifically C in and C out. These are all streams in that they contain characters, and we'll take a closer look at that when we get into some of these examples in a moment. If someone enters data that we can't work with or just doesn't make sense, then we need to be able to fix that and or reprompt them or kill our program if there's no way for us to possibly fix it. This could mean that either somebody entering into the program as it runs gives something that doesn't make sense, or we could possibly have a file that's corrupted or formatted incorrectly or just generally is messed up. And so we need to be able to handle these cases to make sure that our program doesn't crash or generate an infinite loop or just generally not work if somebody does something that they're not supposed to. And so here we're going to do a bit of a short program with kind of just a, a trivial problem that's not really applicable to anything, but is just here for the sake of an example. And what we're going to do is we're going to first read in a Roman letter between A and Z, and that's going to include both capitals and lowercase, just so we can see how we do that. And then after that, we're going to read in an integer between zero and 10 inclusive, and then just make sure that it's in that range. So first things first, let's do some error checking on the character. So it's going to be a Roman letter between A and Z, which means it's going to be a character. So I'm going to create a character here called letter. And what we know from our previous lectures is that in order to read this from the user input, we would simply say C in letter. And maybe it's helpful if I put a prompt as well. Okay, there we go. And we would be all right. Now, we aren't going to have an issue with reading in this case because everything that we could possibly read is always going to be a character at bare minimum, but we want to make sure that the user input is between A and Z. And so let's go ahead and try to check that. And if we encounter an error, then we're going to need to keep reprompting, right? So if you remember, if we need to do something indefinitely or if we need to repeat something at all, then the way we need to do it is with a loop. And so we could do a for or a while loop. I think a while loop would make a lot more sense here because we don't need a declaration. And so what we need to consider is we need to loop while we have bad input. So something that's important when doing error checking is not considering what it is you want, but what it is you don't want. Because we can proceed if what we want is the data that we get, but if what we get is not what we want, then we can't use it. And so the way that I do this from a problem solving standpoint is think about what it is that you want and then do the negation of that. So what we want here is we want a letter that is between A and Z. And so the way that we can do that is we can check letter is greater than A and letter is less than Z. At least for capitals, this will work. Now what I currently have only checks capital letters. And so what I want to do for kind of just for convenience, rather than having to check this against lowercase letters, is I am going to make the letter capital. That way, if it's a lowercase, it will become an uppercase letter. And if it's a uppercase, it will stay an uppercase letter. And there's a way to do this in C++. It's called to upper. And you simply do to upper and then the letter. And so I'm going to do that on both parts. There's also another one called to lower that does the opposite of this and makes a lowercase letter instead. Anyways, one thing that might seem strange about what I just wrote is the fact that I'm using greater than and less than. In fact, I should be using greater than and equal to and less than or equal to. But it might seem weird that I'm using these math comparisons instead of just some other kind of comparison for letters because it might not be clear what greater than means when I'm talking about a letter. And so the reason this works is because if you remember from a previous lecture, all of the characters in a computer are handled as bytes usually. And so 
they are actually just binary numbers on the computer and they correspond to values in that ASCII table if we're in America. So if you remember that ASCII table that we did previously, each letter has a corresponding number that represents it and the alphabet is just kind of continuous in that, right? They're between something like 62 and about 80 something. And so when we're actually doing this with the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, it is actually comparing it to a number representation that A and Z have somewhere in the 60s and 80s, I believe. And so that's why this happens to work. Anyways, just after we clear that up, we know that this, what it does is it checks, is this letter bigger than A and less than Z, which means, is it between A and Z? And so this currently it checks for the input that we want. And that I think might be a little bit easier to work out than what we don't want. But now we kind of want to flip around our thinking. We only want to error check while the input is bad, which means it's the negation of what we want. And so one way to do this, if you're familiar with De Morgan's law, is we can flip the operator that we have and then flip any sort of comparisons that we have as well. So here, what we're doing is we're anding these two things together, right? The opposite of and is or, and vice versa is true as well. If we wanted to, we could flip or into and, and then what we need to do is negate both parts. So if we want the opposite of greater than or equal to, it would be less than. And if we want the opposite of less than or equal to, it would be greater than. So we kind of just need to flip all parts. If you're not familiar with De Morgan's law, it essentially says you need to flip ands to ors, ors to ands, and then negate everything with the negation that you're carrying across everything. And if we're not familiar with De Morgan's law, we can kind of think this through too, if this makes sense for our negation. We want a letter that's in between A and Z. So what we don't want is a number that is not between A and Z. So that would be a number that comes before A, which would be less than A or a number that comes after z, which would be greater than z. We now know that this will successfully error check any sort of things that are not letters. And we've put this in a while so that it will continue to be able to do things as long as this error persists. Now we need to actually address what we should do when we encounter an error. If we've gotten a wrong letter from the user, what we need to do is we should probably let them know and then we should try to read in a letter again. So here, let's just go ahead and throw in an error message. And so I'm going to print the letter here just so we can see what they output. And then what we need to do is we need to read it again. If I don't read again, this is just going to infinitely loop because I'm never going to be overwriting letter. So here I'm just going to see in letter and we'll just read in the next letter from the user. And if we run it now, we should hopefully see that this works as intended. And I'm going to do something a little bit special with this. So if we type in A, it works. And that was a lowercase, right? So we said lowercase are gonna work because we made this to upper part. If I run it here and I capitalize a letter and put in K, it's going to work. If I put in something like an exclamation point, it will say, oh, that wasn't a letter. And then if I try to put in a number, it still doesn't work or a dot, it still doesn't work. And if I type in a letter finally, then it breaks the while loop and it seems to work. Now there's uh, something special I said about this and let's just say I enter a bunch of garbage. So here I'm going to do 9002 and then I don't know, like a, a quote and then I'll hit enter and you'll notice it says that I incorrectly entered all of those. And so there's something weird going on here, right? It's not just reading the first character of what I typed, and it's definitely not reading it as a string because it did actually get all of those individual characters as if I sat there and typed each one individually and hit enter. Let's take a quick look at what's actually going on here. Okay, so this is a look at what we just basically typed into the terminal here, and then the line of code that kind of corresponded with it. We were reading a single letter, which was a character type, and we noticed that it read all of the characters separately rather than just reading them all at once and kind of ignoring them or doing something like that. 
And so what's happening here is, if you remember, we have something called a pointer, and we talked about this in the file I.O. videos, where we were able to make the pointer go through the file and basically read as it goes, and this arrow kind of like moves along with the text that we've read. And when we are using an input buffer, which is what cin is, it's just basically a place to store all the characters that the user has entered, it's going to do something similar. Whenever I do this line, cin letter, what it will do is it will try to match the data type of whatever it is that is reading. So here again, letter was a character earlier declared in the program. And so it will look ahead of this little arrow and it will say, okay, I'm going to try to find a character. And if it finds something that would make sense as a character, it will be able to read it. And if it doesn't find something that's able to read as a character, then it will throw an error. However, because it's a character, and this is why I started with this, it's always going to be able to read it because everything could be a character, right? The number nine could be a number, and this could be the number 9002, but because it's a character, it can just read one individual letter or you know individual symbolic representation at a time. So when it does the C in letter, it will simply take the pointer and update it to here. And so the next time that it does the C in letter, it will move it over to this one, and then over to this one, and then over to this one, and then finally end over at the end. So even though I'm not typing anything explicitly on the keyboard, I typed that whole long string of things, it's able to keep reading it as a character because there's still more left over in the buffer for it to keep reading. This becomes important when we're doing things that aren't character data types because when we enter things that aren't necessarily characters, like an integer that we'll see here in a second, there may be some reading errors because the data is either not formatted correctly or there's still just garbage past that pointer that it's going to try to read and it's going to have an issue with. So let's go ahead and hop back to the code for integers and see how we can handle it there. Let's try to do some code that's similar to the letter code that we just did, but for the numbers now. We said we're going to try and read an integer that's between 0 and 10 inclusive and work with that. First things first, we need an integer to read into, we'll just call it num, and then we will prompt the user. And fix these extra quotes that it gave. And then we will read in. So here we'll just see in num. Now we're going to have a bit of a harder time here because unlike with characters, not everything can be interpreted as a number. If I encounter something that is a word or something strange like that, then I need to be able to work around it. And so what we need to do is we should check that the read was successful. And there's multiple ways to do this. One common way to do this is with cin.fail. So here, what I'm going to say is while cin.fail, and I'll work with that. And cin.fail should only be triggered if cin fails its read. There's another way to do this that'll show at the end that's more common to write, but I think this one's a little bit easier to read, so let's start out with this. If you use fail on any kind of stream, it will work. It also does work on files as well, so just be aware that anything we're doing with CN also works on files. And what it will do is it will simply trigger if the read fails. Let's take a quick look at another input buffer example, this time for integers instead of characters. Here we have an integer called num, and we're going to read it in with CN like we had in our code. Again, the stream pointer is going to start here at the beginning, and it's going to always look directly ahead of this when it tries to read. This time, however, when it does see in num, it's going to see hello, or specifically an H first, I suppose, and it's going to try to make that an integer, and it simply can't do that because hello is not an integer, and there's no way for us to interpret it as one. And in that regard, cin is then going to fail. So in this case, cin will fail. And what we need to do if this happens is two things. One, we should probably clear out the buffer 
even though we can see here that there is a number at the end of the buffer, it's going to be a little bit hard to tell that if we're just constantly trying to read and fix this. So what I think is a good idea is what we'll do is flush the buffer. We'll just completely clear it out, basically move the pointer to the end is what we're going to do in reality. Move it all the way to the end, past everything, and then reprompt the user to enter something that actually does make sense. And then on top of that, we actually need to clear fail. So fail is actually a flag. Whenever there is a read error, there is basically just a bit somewhere that is zero at start because CN does not fail. And whenever the read fails, so here on the first read it will fail, it will update fail to one. And then it won't clear that, you have to do it explicitly. Here if I did CN num and I tried to read hello, CN.fail is going to get set to one. And if I'm going to keep looping, CN.fail is going to continue to have an error until I tell it, well, okay, I fixed the error, try to read again. So there's two parts that we need to do here. We need to first move along in the buffer. Pass the garbage that we have. In this case, that would be all of the characters that are currently in the buffer. And then we are going to have to do a second thing, which is clear the fail flag. Because we don't want it to always be fail, it might succeed the next time, and we should probably just set it to zero by default, which is false, just to make sure that in case the read does fail, that we don't end up accidentally having it still be there even if it didn't fail. Let's go ahead and try to do that in the code now. What we'll need to do is we know that this while loop is only while the number has failed, which means that we're going to want to handle the errors inside this while loop. Here we will again print an error message. And then we will need to reread. So basically the same code that we had previously. However, what we should do before the read is we should do the two things that we said we were going to do, which is to make sure that we first get rid of any sort of garbage that's still in the buffer so we don't have any errors. And then on top of that, we should try and clear the fail flag. Here I'm going to do that with cin.ignore. This is the one that is going to clear the buffer or basically move ahead the pointer. And then the second part that we need to do is we need to clear and so clear will clear the fail flag. And now this code should actually be able to read numbers. Let's go ahead and test it out. Sorry, one quick thing, make sure that it is cn.clear and then cn.ignore and not the other way around. For whatever reason, it doesn't work and will generate an infinite loop if we do it the other way around. But this should work, so let's go ahead and actually do the running and we see that it prompts us for a Z again. We'll just skip that. And then now if I just type in random garbage, you'll see that it clearly gets the error correctly. And then if I type in a number, it works. Now we do have an issue here where it seems to give a bunch of errors for all of this stuff. And I think the reason that that's happening is because the ignore is only ignoring one character at a time. So what I think will fix this is if we put a backslash N here. And I'll explain this as soon as we run it. This should fix the issue. Let's go ahead and type in a character and I'll do the same thing. And you'll see that it only gives one error message now. So it seems like that's what we want to do. And so the reason that this works is ignore will ignore until it hits the character that you're giving it. Here I've given a backslash n now, which stands for enter on the keyboard. So this will go all the way until it hit the enter key that I hit to type in that garbage string that I typed in. If I don't do that, I suppose it only ignores one character at a time, and this would be a better way to do it. But now we have a way for it to consistently be able to get only numbers. And so everything seems to work perfectly fine again. And here, let's just finish up 
our code, we wanted to make sure that it was between 0 and 10. I'm not going to do anything too special here. We could do another while loop, but for the time being, I'm just going to do an if check. We'll just assume that the number is fine, and if they did it wrong, then we'll just exit the program in some way. So here we will say if num is less than 0 or num is greater than 10. You'll notice this is just saying if the number is outside of the range, it's very similar to the way we did the one earlier here, then we should print an error message. Again, we're flipping around our thinking. We want to find things that don't match what we want rather than what we do want. So here we'll just print an error message. We'll say C out number must be between 0 and 10. And then we'll throw an end line. And then we will return a 1, let's just say. And that should be about it. So that's just a quick overview on some basic error checking and how we can handle things like bad data from the user when they enter it into a stream.